What's up guys? Today we are going to get right to this. We're going to jump right into this um, Mexican turkey soup. Is that the correct name of it? I don't know. I'll show you guys the uh, the recipe I followed online and I will put a link to it in the description. This stuff's amazing. I canned it last night. I just got done putting it on the shelves and it is fantastic. This will be another staple soup for me. So come along. I got to do a little voiceover. So hopefully you can bear with that. Uh, I did a lot of this recording while everybody was sleeping. So uh, I did a little voiceover later on in the day. So come on, let's go can some soup. We're gonna start with opening some uh, of our home canned tomatoes for this. Grace saw these sitting on the counter and she was begging to do it. She loves doing this. She's a great helper. We are adding six cups of water into the pot, and then we are going to add six cups of the turkey broth that we just made from the Thanksgiving turkey. Our Thanksgiving turkey was a turkey that we raised, fed, and butchered ourselves, and we're going to be adding three cups of that tur chopped turkey meat, probably a little bit more than three cups. Uh, one and a half cups of carrots, one cup celery, one large onion chopped, diced up, however you want. Six 14 ounce cans of diced tomatoes. We ended up using our home canned tomatoes and I reserved the juice on the side. I just wanted to see it. Two jalapenos chopped up. Three cups of corn. So we're using a quart of corn, or I'm sorry, a pint of corn. And uh, then a cup of our homegrown Indian corn. Four garlic cloves. That corn was also our homegrown. For seasonings, we have some cilantro, some chili powder, red pepper flakes, slap your mama seasoning. We love that stuff. I didn't have any bouillon cubes, so I added some turmeric and a bunch of salt. And here we go. It's all going to go into the pot, and we're going to bring it all to a boil except for the turkey meat. Now, I was just following the recipe, but next time, I think I'll probably uh, saute the garlic, onions, and jalapenos and some of the seasonings a little bit uh, before getting them thrown in here. But for now, just following the recipe. Oh, yeah. Let's get this going. Now right here, I ended up not putting the juice in right away. I just wanted to see what the consistency was going to be like. So that tomato juice that you see sitting on the counter, that actually came out of those cans as well. But um, I wait till a little bit later in the process and I throw it in there. So it comes out to six, six pints of our canned tomatoes that I put in here. That is looking good. We're going to get this burner turned on. We're going to bring this up to, I believe the instruction said to bring it up to a boil. And then let it kind of simmer. Uh, add the meat in, which is what we're going to do. At this point, what have I done here? At this point, everything is in that pot cooking. And I got the canner warming up. And we're going to start putting this into jars here real soon. I've got the juice in there. I've got the meat in there. Look at that. Uh, I've got the Indian corn, all that good stuff in here. Everything is in here. Cooking, just kind of simmering, and we're going to start ladling this into jars. All right, we're looking to leave about one inch headspace, or not about, it's supposed to be a one inch headspace. And then once all the jars are filled, we want to wipe the rim off. Um, most of the time I use vinegar. Sometimes I just use a wet towel. It just depends. But uh, here I'm using vinegar. And then when you're wiping that rim off, you want to be checking for cracks, chips, anything that's going to prevent it not to seal. Even gunk piled on. Um, and then you're going to put the ring on uh, finger tight. And uh, some people are going to say I put that on too tight, uh, including my wife. But... It's what I do, so uh, you don't want to put it on too tight. And then once our canner has vented for 10 minutes, we're going to put the weight on there. This is a gaugeless um, uh, canner, so when that weight starts rattling, about like that right there, that means it's up to pressure. So 
uh, we're going to can this for 75 minutes because it's in pints. It's a meat product in pints, 75 minutes, um, which is done now. I've just turned the burner off and we're going to let everything cool down. Once that safety valve drops, you probably want to wait 10 minutes before you go ahead and pull the weight off. And then uh, I believe instructions say to wait even longer before opening the, the canner. So let's get these all laid out and see how they look. I don't know why. I love pulling these out of the canner whenever I'm canning. I love pulling it out and seeing it. I did remember to put vinegar in my water so none of these jars should look like um, the, the hard water affected them too much. This is hot. This is be pretty careful with stuff here. Oh, it looks so good. I don't know if the video will show it but I did end up noticing some of my jars still look dirty and I put a fair amount of vinegar in there so but these with our water, you can tell a huge difference if we use vinegar. If I remember to use vinegar, um, compared to when I forget to use vinegar, there's just a huge difference. And these ones, you can tell I used vinegar. So, oh my gosh, that looks so good. Mmm. And I love watching it still boiling after it comes out of the canner. I don't know why. I just think the whole canning thing is so cool. You're supposed to let the jar sit for 12 to 24 hours, which I have done. This is the next day, probably in the, I don't know, 18 hour time frame. We're getting all the rings taken off. I usually put the rings in the dishwasher and wash them. I'm checking the seals and then I move on to wiping them down. No matter what, I always wipe down my jars. Uh, you can see the turkey broth I did on the left there. I did not put vinegar in that water and you can see the difference. Anyways, get everything wiped down. Then we're gonna get it labeled. With my messy handwriting, I wish Jenny were available to have wrote this because her handwriting is so much better. Heck, Grace probably could have done a better job. Max Turkey Soup uh, 2019 is how I label that. All right, there it is, sitting on the shelf all nice and purdy. Look, it kind of looks kind of similar because right next to it is my last two pints of my hamburger soup. Oh, I love this hamburger soup. Uh, but I've only got two pints left, and I got split pea and ham. I got goat chili, goat beef stew. Uh, I need more soups. So I got tomatoes to burn through. I could do some soups, some salsa. This, oh, this Thai dipping sauce. Oh my gosh, so good. Um, I got some more soups cranked out. There's all the broths. I actually have to make room for the turkey broths. So that's it. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out. Uh, Mexican turkey soup. Oh, it's good. I almost left one of those pints out and had it last night. So that's it. Get out there, can something. Look at this. Food. Healthy food. None of that. Go find something similar to this in the grocery store and read the label. Generally speaking, a lot of homegrown stuff in here. Um, it's ho The soup is homemade. Uh, I didn't, I didn't put any junk in it. I, there's no junk in this soup. That's awesome. All right, guys, take it easy. Thanks a lot.